Uh, our honored guests. I, I know if I run into trouble with my remarks, I'm just going to go right back to it is possible. Thank you very much. No, just kidding. Um, I do have a few other remarks to, to make, but uh, I do want to thank our, our, our hosts, of course, the MPP, and, and of course, uh, Luisa Ata Azman who is uh, the person who contacted me to be here, and I would not be here without the graces of the Conrad Adenauer Foundation. So thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and uh, to allow me just a few minutes to talk about a very crucial topic for Ghana and for Africa and indeed the entire world, which is the digitization efforts that are so important to our future. And I must say, upon the research that I was able to do, to see the leadership of the government of Ghana, and in particular, the vice president who led these initiatives for digitization, digitalization here in Ghana. Very, very impressive, sir. Congratulations to you. Now, uh, it just so happens that part of my work life these days is in digitalization after a career in politics. Uh, in particular, I have invested in and I'm advising a startup company in AI and blockchain uh, just uh, around the corner in Nigeria. Uh, and so know a little bit, I went to the World uh, Tech Conference that took place in Abuja just last November. And uh, that builds upon the experiences I had in government, where I led the Canadian government efforts on open data, the build out of our broadband, uh, particularly in rural and remote areas, because we go way up to the North Pole. Like, there's, it's not easy to build out broadband in some of these areas. And uh, I also, saw digital services being introduced in our, uh, our revenue agency, uh, in our passport system, and other areas. And I also worked with uh, our private sector, our, uh, those uh, companies that are in the mobile services, to negotiate with them so that if they wanted more spectrum for their services in urban areas, they would have to build out the broadband in rural areas, and uh, that was uh, indeed very successful. But let's face it, we have a rapidly changing world, and digitalization is not just a, a trend, it's an economic necessity for growth, for efficiency, for global competitiveness. Ghana, like many other countries, has recognized this imperative of integrating digital technologies into various sectors that drive development and improve the quality of life for its citizens. And again, I want to pay homage to the significant strides for digitalization that have taken place here in Ghana. Uh, E-governance, digital financial services, digital infrastructure, the introduction of the Ghana card, a biometric identification system, has been, I consider, a monumental step towards, yes, let's, uh, let's uh, acknowledge that, to create a, a database for citizens, easier access to public services, and enhancing national security. And then we've got initiatives like the mobile money interoperability system, which has revolutionized the financial sector. 
and uh, has allowed for seamless transactions across different mobile money platforms. These government efforts, again led by the Vice President, uh, have helped to digitize land records, health services, and education, and uh, really uh, have helped to create uh, a better public service delivery and assure accountability and transparency. So again, my applause go out to the Vice President. You really have led the way. And if you don't believe me, just remember, it is possible. Yes. Now, there are challenges that need to be addressed. Uh, digital literacy, I know the government is working on. Bridging the urban-rural digital divide. Enhancing cybersecurity measures, so important in today's world. Protect citizens' data. I just want to spend a brief minute talking about Canada because I believe that we can learn from one another, and as I'm learning from you, perhaps you can learn a few lessons from Canada's uh, uh, digitization, digitalization journey. Canada has established itself as a leader in digital government with a strong focus on user-centric design, data privacy, and cybersecurity. I just want to give you a, a couple of takeaways. First of all, there's robust digital infrastructure. We've invested heavily in building a robust digital infrastructure. This includes high-speed internet access, even in these remote areas, as, as I described, ensuring that all citizens can benefit from digital services. Ghana can emulate this by prioritizing investments in broadband infrastructure, especially in those rural areas. Inclusive digital policies. Canada emphasizes inclusivity in its digital policies. Programs aimed at, aimed at improving digital literacy among marginalized communities have been successful. And Ghana can adopt similar strategies to ensure that no one is left behind in the digital revolution. I should also mention data privacy and cybersecurity. Canada has stringent data privacy laws and strong and a strong cybersecurity network. Protecting citizens' data is, of course, paramount, and Ghana can learn from Canada as Canada can learn from Ghana when we approach comprehensive data protection regulations and establish robust cybersecurity protocols. Public-private partnerships. Canada's success in digitalization is partly due to effective private-public partnerships, collaborating with the private sector. Uh, those players can bring in innovation and expertise, accelerating digital transformation. Ghana can foster such partnerships to leverage the strengths of both sectors. And finally, digital skills development. Canada invests significantly in digital skills development through various educational and training programs, and Ghana can also benefit from creating similar programs to equip its workforce with the necessary skills to thrive in a digital economy. And that, that's, in fact, some of the, the work I'm doing in Nigeria as well. So let me just say in, in conclusion that Ghana's digitalization efforts are commendable and they hold great promise for the future. And by learning from Canada's experiences as we can learn from yours, we can share best practices and we can overcome these, these challenges and accelerate the digital transformation policy. And I believe that part of this is where government, the private sector, and civil society all work together towards a common goal, a digitally empowered Ghana that offers prosperity and opportunities for all of its citizens. I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here today, uh, Mr. Vice President, Mr. Candidate. I love, I love how you, you're called uh, the, the flag bearer as well. That's that's a, I, I wish I was called that at some point in my career, but I, I never was. But uh, I, I just want to wish you every success. You've got a great team here in Ghana. You've got friends throughout the continent and around the world, sir. Yes, you do. 
I just know I always trust the people to make the right decision. That's that's why we are Democrats. And we believe in the people and we believe in the power of the people. And with God's grace, all of this will come to pass. Thank you very much. It is possible. Thank you very much. Oh, you want to continue acknowledging? He says that in Canada, from 2011 to 2015, the Minister of Industry.